Welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. My name's Luke Martin and today we are in Jerusalem. This is the second episode of our series where we are visiting Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and the West Bank. Now the issues Palestinians and Israelis are facing here is far beyond the scope of this little YouTube channel. Instead, we are here to learn and better understand the people and the culture through their food. So if you didn't check out yesterday's episode, we teamed up with a local food tour company called Delicious Israel in Tel Aviv to sample some incredible Tel Aviv street foods. Just a big scoop. Mm. Oh wow, so aside from the hummus being absolutely delicious, this bread is very fluffy, very soft. And today we are in Jerusalem. This is our first time here and we are on our way to the Mahane Yehuda market to do a little bit of shopping and eating of course. So let's get started. So right now we are walking down Jaffa Road on our way to the Mahane Yehuda Market, which we are going to tell you a lot more about once we get there. But today is Friday here in Jerusalem, which is a special day. It is the day of rest for the Jews here. So that pretty much means for the travelers that the whole city is going to shut down tonight around sunset and it'll be closed until tomorrow night, Saturday night. So a lot of people like to come to this market. It's going to be a super busy day and they like to just stock up on food for the next couple of days. And we are going to do the same because we are expecting a lot of the restaurants to be closed. So we're gonna do a little eating and a little shopping. So today's episode is going to be unique. <laughs> So for breakfast today we are at a restaurant called Azura. It is right outside of the actual market itself and this is a restaurant that is specializing in all kinds of different Middle Eastern dishes. And looking at our spread here, I think we may have over ordered for breakfast but that's okay. So let me introduce everything we've got here. Starting off with this dish here which is actually called the Azura, so named after the restaurant itself. It is a eggplant underneath there, you can't even barely see it. But then it's been stuffed with uh, ground beef and pine nuts and it is kind of served in a little bit of a gravy. So over here we have something called kube. This is an Iraqi dish, which is these semolina dumplings. So these dumplings that are made of semolina dough and then they are stuffed with beef and then it's served in a beet soup. So you can see it's sort of like a blood red, almost uh, beet soup. Over here we've just got a bit of rice. It almost kind of looks like a pilaf and then served with a bunch of stewed okra. We've also got pickles on the side here, pickled cucumbers and pickled peppers. And then back here we've got the beef cheek, which looks absolutely incredible. So they call it the beef head on the menu. I see some chickpeas on top. Again, it's in a little bit of a gravy and that just looks like some seriously tender beef cheek. Let's dig into this. So I'm going to start with the stuffed eggplant here, the Azura, and I'm gonna make sure I get some of that eggplant from underneath, some of that uh, ground beef on top, and then those pine nuts. What a interesting creation. Oh man. Right off the bat, as soon as it touches your tongue, you can just tell it's like home cooked. And the, the dominant flavor there is cinnamon. With those pine nuts, they're not crunchy, they're actually very soft. And then that, that eggplant underneath, it's almost smoky, super, super creamy. This is the okra with rice. And this okra looks like it's been stewed for quite a while. Let's try that. that okra actually has a little bit of a sourness and it's very very tender okra and okra kind of gives off this not like grossly slimy but it does have a little bit of a slime to it so it's very kind of uh, juicy almost Iraqi dumplings Just check that out that is really really unique I've been reading about this dish so I've been looking forward to trying it so let me break into this and this should be stuffed with beef maybe some herbs in there too so I'll go in for a bite of the dumpling, chase it with some of the soup. Mm. Oh, wow. 
Mm. Oh man. Every dish so far just tastes so home cooked. It's incredible. It just tastes so hearty and fresh. So the dumpling skin, like the wrapper itself, actually is quite dense. It's actually not like a Chinese dumpling whatsoever. It's sort of got a bite to it, but really, it's all about the soup. The soup is a little bit sweet and a little bit sour. It has a nice kind of vegetable flavor from those beets. Let's try a piece of the beet by itself. Oh yeah, oh, it's got a nice sour flavor. That is really, really good. Let's try the beef cheek. This just looks ridiculously good. And I can just tell looking at this that this is super, super tender. Oh yeah, look at that. I only need my spoon to pull it apart. Let's get some of those chickpeas and some of the sauce. Wow, that just completely disintegrated in my mouth. I don't know how long they've been stewing that for. That literally fell apart in my mouth. The chickpeas are also very tender, so it's just kind of like you don't need teeth to eat this whatsoever. Oh man, that is that is really good. All of these dishes are incredible. So that restaurant was absolutely incredible. The service is really friendly. They actually have kind of two locations on the same block, so you can eat at either or. And they said that if you come on Fridays, come early because near the noontime, it's going to be absolutely packed, huge lineups and a long wait. So yeah, as Sabrina said, definitely come early. We came around 9 a.m. and uh, the place was pretty empty actually. The owners are super friendly. We actually met the, the head owner, the older guy, really friendly and uh, the food just absolutely incredible a little bit pricey but uh, you pay for the quality now we are heading back up into the Yahuda market and we are going to do a little bit of shopping as I mentioned everything is gonna close down tonight so we want to make sure we have some food at home even though we do have some leftovers from Azura uh, we're gonna buy some produce and just explore the market <laughs> So we're at an olive stall right now, trying to pick some up. We're trying a few before we buy them. Mm. Oh yeah, those are good. I think we'll get those. Can we get five shekels? So we just picked up some olives and the next thing we want to get is chala, which is a Jewish bread and it's commonly eaten on the Shabbat today, Friday. So let's get one. So we just picked up our bread. This was seven shekels, and as I mentioned, this is a Jewish bread. I've never tried this before. It's sort of like braided, you can see, and then topped with some, looks like toasted sesame seeds. So we are gonna take this home, but I do wanna just break off a little piece here to try it now. Let's try it. Bread, very plain, but good. It's kind of like halfway between just a regular white bread and almost like a pretzel because of the, it's a little bit tough and it has a little bit of sesame flavor too. So we got half a kilo of strawberries for 13 shekels and this is something that we don't get in East Asia very often so now we're buying it a lot and these are some beautiful looking strawberries and they smell really nice too. I think they're in season. Mm. Slightly tart, very sweet, very fresh. That's awesome. So we've stocked up on some goodies for the Shabbat and now we are heading to this guy that's really famous here for selling juice. So we're trying to track him down right now. So we tracked down the famous juice guy, his name is Uzi Eli, and we got two different kinds of juice. Uh, the first one here, this yellow kind, is passion fruit. 
with goat's milk yogurt. And then this one is called Etrogat. And that is made with a type of citrus that is a popular Jewish food called Etrog. And then also Gat, which is a type of leaf that uh, people, it's, it originates in Yemen and they chew it as a stimulant. Let's try this one out first, the Gat. Oh, that actually tastes really good. It's almost minty. It's got a little bit of like a sort of a mint flavor and then a little bit of a sweetness and sourness. Let's try the passion fruit with uh, the goat's milk yogurt. Oh man, that is delicious. That is seriously flavorful. I love passion fruit. That also has like a creamy goat's milk, uh, the yogurtiness. Wow, those are both really good. And uh, this is really interesting. I just wanted to try this because of the ingredients. I've never tried Gat before, so. So I'm gonna give the juices a try now. Luke talked them up, so I think they're gonna taste pretty good. Mm. Well, that's really fresh, but it's, it's a little bitter. It has a little bit of a bitterness to it, but it does taste quite nice. And uh, I'll try the passion fruit now. Wow, that's so good. Passion fruit is one of my favorite fruits of all time, so I think I prefer this one over this one, but both of them are quite good. I, I give it a try if you come. Those juices were seriously flavorful, and now uh, we are still quite full for breakfast even, but we're heading to get some dessert. We just finished buying the rugula, the famous uh, product here at the Marzipan Bakery. That was absolutely insane in there. I can't believe how busy it is all for their famous chocolate rugula and they're baking this stuff fresh. It smells seriously good in there. So we are standing outside of the bakery, the Marzipan Bakery. Uh, this place, like I just said, is absolutely insane and it's right on the side of the road and we got their chocolate rugula, which are these little, almost they look like croissants and they're stuffed with chocolate and they're just swimming in chocolate sauce. So we're gonna take these home with us, but I gotta try one of these right now. So let me grab one and oh man, Look at how, oh my god, that is so saturated. It's like soaking wet. Wow, that is seriously heavy. You do not want to eat a lot of those. I love how they are warm right now, but they are so saturated, like almost soggy on the bottom, and then a little crisp layer on the top. Quite chocolatey, very, very sweet, and very, very rich, but that it's seriously good. Okay, since these are so messy, Luke's gonna just give me one so I don't have to get my hands messy. You gotta messy. one bite it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, <mom. laughs> we are having a lot of fun at the market here, the Makane Yehuda Market. It is seriously busy, but there is a lot of good food. We are quite stuffed and we picked up a lot of stuff, but we do wanna try all the famous things that I read about online. So now we are heading to a Georgian bakery. So we are at the bakery now. As I mentioned, this is a Georgian bakery. They're serving pretty much only one thing, and that is called Hachapuri. This place is called Hachapuria, and they specialize in this Georgian style bread. Uh, we ordered ours up with egg and cheese. Sitting outside, it's a really pleasant weather out today here in Jerusalem. Okay, our Hachapuri just arrived, and this thing looks seriously good. Check this out. It is really heavy when I pick it up like that. You can see there's at least two fried eggs on top, and look at all that butter. Look at that, oh man. Oh, and underneath there, there should be tons of Georgian cheese. There is also some things on the side here. It looks like we've got two different types of sauce, a red sauce and a green sauce, and then maybe some pickled carrots, it looks like. It reminds me very much of the Turkish pea day that we just had in Istanbul. No fork or knife is served with it, so I'm guessing it's just a kind of rip and dip sort of dish, oh man. That is seriously hot. I just got some of the butter on my finger kind of burned. Okay, let's see what I can do here. Oh, look at that. Oh man, this is seriously good looking. Now let's try a bite. Okay, that is piping hot. Really good though. The bread is like dense, but very kind of delicate at the same time. And the egg, seriously that egg, it's crazy good, super, super creamy. Just check this out. There's so much yolk going on in there and so much butter. You can kind of just dip the bread in there with all that cheese underneath. The cheese gives it kind of like a little saltiness. Let's go for one more bite. 
Oh man. What? That's so buttery. So what? buttery and good. That is addicting. So although this doesn't look like much, it is seriously delicious. This is my first encounter with Georgian food and I am really impressed. This is awesome. I love the cheese. And I love the egg too. Man, it is really creamy and good. But let's try these two sauces. I haven't tried these yet. So we've got a red sauce. Oh, it's almost like a salsa actually. It's a tomato base, a little bit of red pepper too, but it's not spicy. Let's try the green one too. This one looks really good. Let's try that. Oh man. That is seriously good. That is packed full of dill. There is so much dill in there. A lot of garlic too, for sure. It's almost like not spicy, but it sort of makes your face sweat with all that dill and garlic. It's a little bit sour. That is awesome. It almost tastes like pureed dill pickles. Good way to end our tour of the Yehuda market here in Jerusalem. Okay, so we have done all our shopping and we are super full after a really great day of eating here at the Mahane Yehuda market in Jerusalem. This is our first video and we're hoping to make a couple more here in Jerusalem before we head to the West Bank. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you're notified when we post a video. Let us know down in the comment box what you thought of the food that we tried today and what looked the most delicious. And all the information for the spots we visited today will be down in the description box as usual. And we'll see you again on another episode of Shopstick Travel soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.